A Late Walk. A poem by Robert Frost. When I go up through the mowing field, the headless aftermath, smooth laid like thatch with the heavy dew, half closes the garden path. And when I come to the garden ground, the whir of sober birds up from the tangle of withered weeds is sadder than any words. A tree beside the wall stands bare, but a leaf that lingered brown, disturbed, I doubt not, by my thought, comes softly rattling down. I end not far from my going forth by picking the faded blue of the last remaining aster flower to carry again to you. The illustration is so beautiful and reflects so much of the poem. And this describes a field that is used to make hay. So grass is grown in order for it to be mown, mowed. So it's a mowing field. And that's the purpose of the field to be mowed. And he calls it the headless aftermath. So aftermath means what comes after. So after the field has been mown, it's as if the heads of the wheat were cut off. So here you can see an illustration of the wheat and you have the green bits and then the wheat berries on top. And the wheat has probably been harvested for the grain and then just the hulls are left. And then that's cut down and dried and made into hay to feed to animals. So the mowing has already taken place where he's walking and the aftermath is what will be the hay. It's the cut down grass, smooth laid like thatch with the heavy dew. So the dew, there's dew in the air. Dew is moisture. It's, it's much lighter than rain. It's just moisture that collects on whatever is on the ground and it has made the grass smooth like thatch. Thatch is what they make roofs out of, or they used to make roofs out of hay, and it was matted together to make, to make a roof, and there are houses that were built with thatch a long time ago. So he's comparing it to that. And the aftermath of the mowing, the grass that was cut down, half closes the garden path. So it's kind of blocking the garden path a little bit. And when I come to the garden ground, so he's gotten to the garden, the whir of sober birds, the whir is kind of a monotonous sound of sober birds. So sober can mean sad, or just not very excited, maybe calm, and this is the end of the day. And there's a bird in the illustration. So he's describing what he thinks they sound like. And listen to that line, the whir of sober birds, sober birds. The b-b is called alliteration. 
Alliteration means the repetition of a consonant sound. Usually it's at the beginning of a word. So this might be also called consonants, where a consonant sound is repeated. And then you have a, a, an internal rhyme, the whir of sober birds. You see how all three of those words have an er sound. And it's called an internal rhyme because it's in one line. The usual rhyming of a poem comes at the end of the lines where the last words rhyme. So that's a really wonderful line if you just say that out loud. The whir of sober birds, the whir of sober birds. It kind of sounds like what it's saying. The line before it has alliteration, garden, ground, g, g. And then the third line, up from the tangle of withered weeds. So you hear the w, withered weeds. And it also ends with the same sound, d, withered weeds. And then the d sound is picked up in the fourth line, is sadder than any words. When you say poetry out loud and you notice repetition of consonant sounds, vowel sounds, or words, just notice how that makes you feel and what it sounds like to you. In the third stanza, so a stanza is like a paragraph in a poem. And this poem has four stanzas, and each stanza has four lines. In the third stanza, a tree beside the wall stands bare, but a leaf that lingered brown. Okay, so you have alliteration there. A leaf that lingered. L -l and lingered brown. So in lingered, you have the R sound, and in brown, you have the R sound. Disturbed, and then you have the, the er sound, like lingered, disturbed. So that's picking up on that. Disturbed, I doubt not, by my thought. So he's saying that the leaf got disturbed by his thoughts. He was just thinking, comes softly rattling down. Comes softly rattling down. And that line kind of sounds like the leaf falling. Softly rattling down. It has a rhythm, softly rattling down. The word rattle to me is it sounds like what it means. And there's a term called onomatopoeia. Onoma onomatopoeia, it's kind of hard to say, onomatopoeia means words that sound like their meaning. Rattling sounds like rattling to me. And a dry leaf would rattle. So there's the leaf. And it has lingered. So this is late fall, maybe... November in New England, that's late fall, and most of the leaves have already fallen. But this one lingered, and it's brown, because it would be brown by then. Leaves in New England, in New England, turn um, all kinds of gorgeous colors, orange, yellow, red, gold, and then they end up brown. So this tells us how late in the autumn it is. So there's the tree beside the wall. I love how they illustrate that. In the fourth stanza, I end not far from my going forth. So it's not far from where he started, where he started going forth. By picking the faded blue 
of the last remaining aster flower to carry again to you. So he's ending his walk or the poem, not far from where he started. And he's going to end it by picking the faded blue of the last remaining aster flower. An aster, um, the word aster means star, comes from the Latin star. And it's a flower that looks like a star. Um, it kind of has slightly pointy petals and blue asters are so, blue asters are so beautiful and they come out in the fall and since this is the last remaining aster flower so it's kind of the end of the season they've been blooming throughout the fall and listen to the sound of that third line in this stanza of the last remaining aster flower. You hear the ast, ast, last aster. The last remaining aster flower. And the word remaining kind of sounds onomatopoetic to me. It, it sounds like what it means. Remaining. Sounds like remaining of the last remaining aster flower to carry again to you. So he has done this before. He has picked the asters in this area and brought them. Maybe it was to his wife or a friend, or maybe it's to us, the reader. So he is like an old friend to us and he has brought us aster flowers before. I like to think that. So let's see if we can find any other rhymes. In the first stanza, we have field, aftermath, dew, and path. So it looks as if the second and fourth line rhyme. And that may be the pattern. Let's see. Let's look in the second stanza. Ground. Birds, weeds, words. Birds and words rhyme. That's also the second and fourth. So this looks like the pattern. Poems have patterns. So in this poem, the second and the fourth lines rhyme. Let's look in the third stanza. Bear, brown, thought, down. Brown and down. Fourth, blue, flower, you blue and you. So that's the pattern. Um, when you analyze poems and if you want to label the rhyme scheme, you can assign each word with a letter of the alphabet. So you'd start with A for field, B for aftermath, C because that's a different sound. Every different sound gets a new letter. So C for do, and then B for path, because it's the same, math, path. So A, B, C, B. And then you'd have D, because that's a new sound. E, that's a new sound. F, that's a new sound. And E, because birds and words rhyme. And then you have G, I think we're on G now. H, I, and H, brown and down. And then J, K, L, and K. And if any of these were repeated, you would just use the same letter, but I didn't find any of the sounds that were repeated. So that's how you do rhyme scheme in poetry. So I encourage you to read this to yourself again, out loud, slowly. In fact, I'll read it again and you can read with me or just listen. When I go up through the mowing field, the headless aftermath 
smooth laid like thatch with the heavy dew, half closes the garden path. And when I come to the garden ground, the whir of sober birds up from the tangle of withered weeds is sadder than any words. A tree beside the wall stands bare, but a leaf that lingered brown, disturbed, I doubt not, by my thought, comes softly rattling down. I end not far from my going forth by picking the faded blue of the last remaining aster flower to carry again to you. <laughs>